Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. King Tackle. As the match heightened in drama, the Germans waged war with the ground bait sling, but to no avail. Poor old Germany. But in next door swim, Dan lost his sling, but like a true captain, he dived in and plucked it on its descent into the depths of Gigantica. As Macmillan and Fairbrass hauled, poor Lion Cub Tom Dove off the action was fighting his demons. Macmillan's OCD reached new heights as his bivvy was cleaned for the 400th and 7th time in four days. What a freak. Young underwear model Mario started pulling strokes and had his pants whipped by referee Danny Turley. The free line supremo was back in the drink, this time for the James Bond auditions. Dan, you look great. And for me, it was a chance to return to my Iranian angling roots. No rod, reel, line, just a pair of great eyes, immense muscle, diving prowess, and the reactions of a grizzly bear. With activity hotting up, everything is pointing to an exciting climax to the Gigantica European Carp Cup. Welcome to the latest episode of Thinking Tackle. I'm Ali Hamidi and we're still at Gigantica Lake where England are absolutely hammering Benelux in Germany. Mr McMillan, how big is this absolute stunner? This little one, Al, is 24 and a half pounds. All right, and anything else in the night? Yeah, I had a, a small a 21, 21 2. Um, and we also we lost that fish that, that did us in a snag again last night. So uh, two 20s is a, a small consolation but for, for the loss. But you're building up a big lead. Yeah, I think we're about 150, 160 pounds in front now. But uh, they're twitching. There's some very twitchy anglers about on the lake. Well, I don't even think their bobbins are twitching, mate. So <laughs> I don't think there's any of that going on. Uh, things are going really well. You've got a, you've got a method that's working for you. Yeah. I think what we're going to do is going to get this fish back. Macmillan is mauling them. Let's have a look at his rigs. With Mr. McMillan quietly winkling a few fish out of an unfancied area, I bet you guys at home are dying to find out some of the trickery that's in his rig box, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So, Mr. McMillan, something between your legs that you're about to show me. <laughs> there you go, mate. Right, what we have here, which is what is doing the damage, it's quite a quite a brutal way of fishing for me, really, but it's working. So, uh, we've got a, we've got a gravel safe zone leader. Yep. With a gravel gravel hybrid lead clip. One thing to mention there is, is that is only nicked on probably about a mil and a half. So yeah, you bet you've, what you're saying, you've literally got it over one of the teeth yeah. on the hybrid yeah. lead clip. Yeah. The, the reason for that? Uh, the rod that's doing all the damage in the snags, I want that lead off straight away. I'm fishing all locked up, quite a tight line. So as soon as it's picked it up and shaking its head, the lead's off straight away so the fish will come up. Yeah. Straight above the snags. And it's worked the last couple of fish. I've lost a couple in there, but that's the nature of snag fishing, you know, so. So, so you've adjusted things from the start of the session yeah. to, to that sort of quick release element. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and are you doing anything with the actual rod set up to, 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 aid, to aid that? Yeah, the clutches are completely locked up, which I really, I'm not into that sort of fishing at all. I don't do it, I don't like it, but it's a match. So we've got to beat them, you know, so whatever, whatever means necessary. But I've also got a big bank stick there, so the rod is, the kind of bend of the rod is all that the fish has got to take and then I'm on it straight away, which is why I'm not fishing now at night, because I won't be there quick enough and it'll just do me straight in the, straight in the snags. Okay, cool. Um, right, moving on to lead, I can see that's quite large for the area you're actually fishing. If I'm honest, it's the biggest lead I've got with me. It's three and a half ounce. If I had a five ounce, it'd be on there. I want the, I'm fishing a tight line, so as soon as the fish picks the rig up, the lead will drive the hook home, but then the weight, when it's shaking its head, it'll be straight off. A lot of resistance there. One, so I can keep the line tight, and two, that it'll, it'll nail the rig home, you know? So what you're saying, big lead, 
helps hook the fish, and then once they shake their head, the minute that leg comes off the fish, oh, I'm free. Yeah, yeah. Shoot Straight up to the surface. Top. Right, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Let's move on to the hook link now, mate. What's the connection process here? What we've got here, we've got a little, just a little quick link here. Yep. That's just to finish it off. I know you think that's too long, but I like, <laughs> but I like doing it like that, so it works It's only because I'm tight, mate. Well, yeah, you'll get two out of that, won't you? Yeah, free. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hybrid soft in brown, just to match the late bed, really. Okay. A couple of bobs of putty yep. to keep everything pinned down. Um, we've got a size six wide gape X with a little ring just to act as a blowback. Quite a big gap there between the ring and the 20 mil bottom bait. That's which, about half a centimetre, isn't it? Yeah, very, very important that. You've got, you've got to have a, a, a good gap, you know, to, for the rig to, to, to do its job properly, you know? Uh, and then we've got a little tutti frutti just pop up on the end as a bit of visual. Little sight. So, I mean, it's interesting what you said about the putty there, because they're two, two nice big bits, but you did touch earlier about how it's very flat, you know, you've got the gravel, the safe zone leader, all of that, it's, everything's pinned down tight to the yeah, lake bed. Yeah, everything's pinned down. I've done as much as I, I can to camouflage it because the water, like we say, is so clear. Yep. You really don't want kind of a silt leader with a green clip. You know, you probably still get bites, but you yeah. want to be doing as much as you can to camouflage everything. It's those extra percents, mate, that even though you're in an unfancied swim, you're you're catching as many as anybody, which is, yeah. you know, Seems to be what testimony. You know yeah. 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 Okay, I can. I know you've got a couple of other bits yeah. set up down here. Um, this is the one with a curve shank. Fold that up you there. So, what's the thinking behind this one? It's it's not dissimilar to the last one. Same material, hybrid soft brown. There's no putty on there yet, but yep. that would have putty on when it goes out. That is my. I mean, I do use the KD quite a lot, but that is just my version of it, where the silicon is just there, just to trap it, just to keep the hair in place on the yep. cast. Yep. So it's just back. If it's I. Ju it's just balancing. The hook is yep. lying flat. But that is that is a dumbbell bottom bait with a bit of plastic that just pulls it up off the off the off the deck. Again, Again bit of visual. Yep. And it's a rig that just nails them. You know, they really find them curved hooks difficult to spit out. Yeah, especially when you've got to use them barbless. They're curving in, curving out. Yeah. Well, I know you've just got a couple of other little hook bait variations here. Um, want to talk through that? That basically, Al, is the same rig as, as I showed you with a tutti frutti pop up on it. Yep. That is just a high vis milky toffee. Again, just something a bit different, you know? Yeah, so changing colour, keep, keeping, keeping things varied, keeping them guessing and yeah. hopefully nicking your bite. Yeah. The, on, the, only, the only rig I've caught on uh, twice, not on the same rig, but on the same presentation as the, as the orange, the tutti frutti and the 20 mil cell. I just keep changing them around. Just, you, I just want that bit of visual. Uh, but I have had a bite on this as well, which is really, really gruesome and really blatant, but a double 20 mil cell. It's like a welly rig, isn't it, mate? Well, it is, mate. Yeah, I, I would, I would cast that on welly, but it's a big bit of metal, a couple of big up baits. They will really find that difficult to spit out. Well, there we have it, Mr. McMillan, keeping it simple, ringing the changes, and it's obviously working. Well, we've seen his rigs, and we can see exactly why they're so good. What an absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning carp. carp. It spawned out, but how big is it? Thirty-two and a half, mate. This one looks like it could be in an Oxford lake, doesn't it? How long have you actually been fishing since you got the rods back out after dinner? Uh, ten minutes this went, but I'd, they'd been in, they'd been reeled in for about four hours, and I let them have about four kilo bait before I went to dinner. Um, so see a couple when I come back round with the water. Uh, so they're obviously there, and they like to be in those snags. And yeah, ten minutes. Do you think um, putting the bait out before dinner was uh, critical in this capture? Um, well, I've used well, I've used 25 kilo in three days, so they're obviously liking what I'm putting out in front of them. But yeah, the, a free meal never does them any harm, does it? Oh, really? What? What are you using? A mixture of boilies or just one type of boilie? Just one. 20 mil cell. That's all I'm putting out. No spod, no ground bait balls, nothing. Just boilies Re over a big area as well. Well, they seem to be getting bigger, Ting Tong, <laughs> and that is, you know, quite possibly one of the most stunning carp you're likely to see. And. Uh, you know, for all its intents and purposes, probably a 40 pounder yeah, yeah. before spawning. Well spawned out, yeah. Are you confident of an even bigger one? Of course. Well, Ting Tong, always confident, flying the English flag. England are not resting on their laurels, even though they've got a convincing lead. I think the Dovster has got a little trick up his sleeve. Dovey, where are you off to, son? 
Well, I'm off to swim next door. I think um, in my draw I get two swims. I've got sort of the primary swim on this side, the first one, and then the second swim down there, which is probably 40, 50 yards up the bank. Yeah. Um, and the fish have totally swung around with the wind. Um, it was primarily blowing a northwesterly, I think, and now it's blowing an easterly. So the fish are moving all over the other side and into the middle. Yeah. Um, and it did look good in there, first of all. So this I'm is big girls, isn't it? And then your other swim available to you is Oblivion. The one next yep. Um, it did look good in there, first of all, so I thought I'd set some traps out in the corner. Um, but now it's totally swung around, so I'm going to move next door and see if I can put them further out into the middle where the fish are. Yeah, so what, you know, you've got to go into the middle. Have you got any other plans? And I know you were chatting to Dan earlier, yep. maybe a tactical change. What's the, you know, what's on the agenda in there? Just more bait, I think. Yeah. So there's loads of carp in here. Um, and I think the, the best thing to do is just put, a, put a lot of bait out and see if you can draw them towards you because fishing little bits and bobs here just isn't going to work because I'm not on many fish. So I think I'm going to have to see if I can draw the fish in a little bit. Now, at the moment, England have got two pairs catching. Ben Lux, there's only been one guy out of their team that's caught. If England can get three of you all catching, yeah. do you think victory's guaranteed? I think we could run away if we all start catching, but the other teams could start catching as well, so you can never say anything, can you? Right, well, I'll let you get in there, and then we'll catch up with you once you're set up and raring to go. OK, lovely. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. Well, Dovey's already moved. He's starting to put some bait out, so we're going to show you exactly what he's doing because it's a method that Dan's already adopted. He's done a great job. He's got bites. We're going into night three. Tom, what is it that you're doing? Basically, firing these massive balls out as far as I can. Um, it's, I think it's otherwise known as uh, monkey puke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they've officially yeah. named it monkey puke. Um, I've never smelt monkey puke, mate, but you know it's got to be it, similar to that. It can't, it? It can't be, be far off. You're very right. You're very right. Now, what's the contraption that you're using? Well, I think it's effectively a catapult patch with two two bits of line either side. Yep. And the whole idea behind it is that it fires out, and that will eventually come out of the pouch. Yep. So basically, if I put the microphone in my armpit, as that leaves the rod, these wings grip it, okay, and then. As it accelerates through, these wings will open up, allowing this to fly through the air. Now, unbelievably, it's almost impossible to get ground bait balls over 40 to 50 yards with standard methods. That's I, you know, generally a catapult. But with this, I've seen people put it to up to 200 yards. Quite unbelievable. So, go on, Dovster, get one out there. I don't think I'm going to be able to put it 200 yards, but we'll. Uh, give well, you're it a fishing, go. I, I, I guess, 90. Maybe 100? Uh, yeah, maybe 100 yards, I think. Yep. I think w one thing to point out is is that with a longer drop, I think they go out further, get more of a sort of a pendulum swing with it. Yeah, the, the casting arc, it's like anything, the bigger the load, yep. the bigger the drop. So almost like spotting, you've got a drop about, well, down about to the spigot. spigot. Yep. Yeah, very important, allows you to get a nice arc, a nice action, let that go up in the air yep. and out there as far as you can get it. Let's give it a go. Go on then. Here we go. Well, that's absolutely bang on, mate. You've yeah. almost taken the paint off the marker float. So you're using this bait now. We've seen Dan have a few results off it. What, what sort of feeding reaction are you trying to generate with it? Well, hopefully similar to boilies. Um, I'm actually going to put these out, spread them over a big area. Although I did go close to the marker, I'm not actually trying to go for the marker. Yep. I'm going to spread them out over a big area, put some boilies out as well, and hopefully get them moving again um, to make them easy to catch, really. OK, and, and why this and not spotting? Um, there's so many little fish in here, bream, roach, rudd, I think as well we've seen show, haven't we? Um, that when you're spotting, it doesn't hit the bottom. I mean, previous trips I've been out in the boat and put munga like this over the side of the boat and it just, just doesn't hit the bottom. They're eating it before it hits. Yeah, yeah, so, so you're um, only getting a few of the larger particles get to the bottom, yeah. which really isn't enough to keep fish in the swim for long enough, No, is but it? When, when they're in a ball like this, they're not breaking when it hits the surface. They're going to go down and break up on the bottom. Yep. So hopefully the carp are going to be the first ones to eat them. Yeah, and another thing you'll notice is he's got the balls in there. There's, I don't know, maybe 15 or so that you're, you're putting out. Yep. But where 15 spots or so might take you 15 minutes, yeah. That takes you a couple of minutes. Well, I reckon you can put out a whole bucket in 15 minutes with this. It's so quick and effective, it really is. Right, well, we're going to let you keep firing them out there. Okay, Hopefully, going into night three, yep. your fortunes may turn. Hopefully. And a big monster might just come in on these monkey pukes and uh, leave you a happy boy. Lovely. Right, Cheers, okay, mate. Get these out.
Well, we're in a swim called the Pink and the Stink, and it's fair to say up till now, Bart Voitum was having a bit of a stinker. But out of nowhere, some action. How big's this one? It's 28 pounds. Now, was it the only action of the night, or was there some other activity? No, yesterday evening I lost one. It was also a nice fish. Now, have you done anything different? Have you changed any methods to get these bites? Yeah, every, every hour during the night, I pre baiting a little bit over all my rods. You say a little bit, what sort of quantity? During the night, three or three kilos. Three kilos of boilies. Mm -mm. What, in one, at one go or, or broken up over a period? Broken up over, over three rods. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Any, any changes on rigs or has it been purely your methods with the bait? A little bit changes on rigs, but I got two takes on different rigs. So this, I, think, I don't think rigs that do the matter, do the difference. Okay, so this is a real, real big change for the fishing. It's, it's really helped Benelux. Are you confident now that you've found a tactic that works, that this could be the sort of change for you? I hope so, we'll see you the next, na next night. Huh? Very hopeful. Well, the Benelux boys are not giving up. They are not going away without a fight. Just when you thought Benelux were mounting a comeback, England rage on forward with Daniel Fairbrass with another, another lovely, lovely carp. How look, big is this one, mate? Uh, 19 and a half pounds, but mate, who cares how big they are when they look like that, eh? Just imagine him, mate, at 40 pound. What a stunning carp he's gonna be. A real stunner, mate, an absolute beauty, and uh, very English looking, to be fair. Yeah, it is, mate, it is. It's nice to get another one. It's, it has slowed up in this swim. Um, I had a little one yesterday, as you know, and. Uh, Sort of, I was racking my brains, there was fish on me yesterday afternoon, didn't catch anything. So I've changed things around, I've just put just a 20 mil cell on, just drilled it out and put a little bit of cork in it, a little trick that you and Tom use, you know, um, and put it on a four inch hook link as well. Standard rig with a rig ring on the, on the shank of the hook as I normally fish. And I thought I'd try a short hook link and see if that works. And out the three rods, that's the only one that's got it on and that's produced the bite. So I'm going to be swapping a few more rods over to that later on. Yeah, it's interesting stuff because you've not really rested on your laurels at all during the match. You've kept tinkering, you've kept making changes. Now, one guy that loves to make changes but hasn't really held on to any of these carp yet is a German man called Etienne Gable and he's got some tricks up his sleeve that I bet you'll love to see. Etienne and myself are old mates and it's been nice to fish in the competition in the swims next door to each other. We've been able to catch up and talk rigs and all that sort of stuff. And he's using stuff on his home waters, which I think is more advanced than anything that I've seen used in the UK. Um, so all credit to you, mate, for thinking about this. But tell us a little bit about the waters that you're fishing and why you've come up with this sort of stuff. My waters, where I live, are much clearer than this one. Really? Much clearer than this one. So what, what sort of depth do you think you can see the bottom in there? Seven meters. So over 20 foot? Yeah, for I the, can for the see English. everything. I really? I can see everything. Right, yes. okay. With a boat and with an aquascope. So you're looking yeah. through and, yeah. and, and looking I, at the spots yeah. and everything on yeah. the bottom? And uh, yeah, I'm trying to match uh, everything to the, to the bottom. Right. Because, uh, yeah, they're pressured fish. Right. For around about 20, 25 years, they are pressured fish. Right, okay. Really shy fish. Right. And uh, in waters, they are clear. Yeah. It's very difficult. They know what's going on. They know everything. What's so, going in, on. in a typical lake that you fish, um, how, many, how big's the lake? How many fish swim in it? How big are the fish? It, uh, it, we have different lakes. Right. Uh, all, all lakes uh, where I live are very clear. Right. I told you already. What about the one with the big, where you had the big brace of commons recently then? Um, around about 10 hectares. Right, so it's 25 acres. Yeah, round yep. about this. Right. There are only 20 fish. Right, okay. Yeah. So very, very similar to English fishing, because, you know, if you've never been to Germany, which I haven't, you think about the waters as being enormous with huge numbers of fish. The fish have never been caught before, and it's easy fishing. But that, that sounds more like an extreme English situation than, uh, than we were expecting, I would say. Yeah, but we have uh, also different lakes with uh, a huge amount of fish, very right. big lakes, lakes with a yeah, huge amount, not so pressured, right. that, that's easier to go there. Right, but, okay. Uh, the so, really big fish are in the small, uh, clear water. Right, and they're the ones you're targeting. Yeah. Right, okay, so talk, to, talk us through these bits of trickery on here, because I, I love this one. I really, th th this really caught my eye. You've got what looks like some silicon tubing that you've threaded up the hook link yeah. and then concertinaed it up. Yes. So it's so it's a bit textured and a bit... Yeah, and What's What's exactly. the thinking behind that? The thinking behind that is uh, 
that uh, I've uh, saw it uh, from a boat that yep. are little little twigs like this, little twigs on the ground. Right. And I want to match all my stuff like the twigs. Right. Okay. So, so you uh, you seen all the little twigs on the spots? So they're not completely clean. Yeah. There's little bits, and you're trying yeah. to break everything up so it doesn't yeah. look like a straight line. Yes. yes. And you've you've keep, kept that concertina up there by two bits of rig putty. Yeah. Um, on there that just keeps it all together. And yeah. I notice on the hook as well, yeah. you've got silicon all the way around the hook as well. Always. 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 Right, okay. I want to have maximum camouflage on right. the hook. Right, very clever. And th this next one as well, I mean, this is great. I can see the boys at places like Yateley and that, the real difficult lakes where you're fishing for one bite a year. I can see them really looking at these things and thinking, yeah, because for us, this is outside the box. This is different from what English guys think about, and that's why I think it's so good. On there, you've got you've got rig putty, haven't you? Yeah. All the way down, sort of way. lumpy, all the way down. It. Yes. So it's 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 heavy. You know, obviously it's going to sink, but if you imagine that stick underwater, it goes darker. It takes the water yes. on. Yes. Yes. Very very similar. Very similar. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, excellent. This next one is what I love. This. You've got bits of silicon on here, threaded up the hook, so they come yeah. off at all crazy angles. Yeah, yeah. And what, what's the idea behind that? The idea was uh, that I want to match my hook uh, to uh, like a twig. Like a twig. Like so a, a small twig. Yep. So you, you've got a bit of fluorocarbon hook link yeah. on there, still the putty to hold yes. it down. Yes, yes. But um, it's not a hook anymore, is it? No, it's that's not the, a hook. That's the thing I love about it. Only um, the point is free. Only the point is free. And then feather on the hook as well. Yeah. What happens in the water to that one? I've, uh, I've, I saw this one uh, from Joe Morgan. Yes. He's using this rig and yep. uh, yeah, I, I like this rig. Right. But uh, um, there, there comes air, a little bit air in the, in the uh, feather. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it's a big bubble on the ground. Right, okay. A big bubble. It, it, right. takes, it takes a few uh, minutes that, that, uh, that the air can get, go out. Right, okay. For, the water pressure is working and yep. then the air comes out. And that's, you've got a big bit of putty on there, but that, uh, that's still a bottom bait, is it there? It's a bottom bait, yeah. Right, okay. Very, very clever. And then moving down onto this one, not so much camouflage, you've still got the bit of silicon on the hook, but two hook baits. Um, now, we've seen this written about in the English magazines. Hutchinson put it in a book years ago, but I've never actually seen anyone cast it out. So what's the, the thinking behind that? The thinking behind that is when I, when I use a, a big mix of, uh, of different baits, yep. when, when I go for spotting, yes. you, know, you know better than me. <laughs> One day, this bait is better. Yep. The next day, the other bait is better. Okay. When I put two different baits, I have different options. Right, okay. Very clever. Very clever. And then this last one, um, again, the, the, you've got the putty on it and everything else, but the thing I liked about this one is how the hook turned. Just that you've got a choddy hook on there, so an outturned yeah. eye hook. But look, yeah. look at, I mean, it's not, even the weight of the bait doesn't seem to be making a difference. It's just, oh. so what made you come up with that? This one turns really, really quickly. Yep. And uh, I've got here a small, a small loop yep. for, for hinge, for the movement. Okay. And uh, the, the thinking behind that is it turns really, really quickly. Yeah, it does. And it does. It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and, you know, I wouldn't expect that for a hook with an outturned eye like a choddy, but yeah. um, it's, a, it's amazing how quickly it does turn. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, mate, I'm amazed that you haven't caught anything on this session. Nothing. And uh, I think there was, there was a little bit, um, you were probably a bit misled by the last time we fished here, I was spotting. I was catching, yeah. I've come this time, I'm using boilies. Last time you were using boilies, it didn't work and spotting <laughs> yeah. worked. Now it's the other way around. Um, things change, don't they? You know, there's more, yeah. there's more bream prevalent in the lake now than there's ever been before. Yeah. Um, even though Danny's taking them out, they're st they still are a problem. And that's why yeah. I've used boilies more than anything else. But yeah. we've still got 24 hours to go. We have. And it only takes <laughs> a second to get a run. Yeah. And there are half a dozen 60s swimming around out yeah. there right now. So thank you very much for that insight. I hope people put this into their own fishing in the UK because I'm spellbound by all of this stuff. This is camouflaged to the nth degree and uh, I'm certainly gonna try it when I go back to England. Hopefully you will as well. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity.
Well, good morning. Um, it is the morning of day five, and uh, I've just been at the end swim, just having a coffee and chatting about why it's not happened for me for 24 hours, and uh, this little common's proving me completely wrong, and he's just about ready for the net. So you just have to excuse me while I uh, put more points on the board. Come on, little baby. Gotcha! Excellent. More for England. Well, we've just seen Mr Fairbrass bag another one. England are absolutely flying. I can't see anyone catching them. It's one of the babies of Gigantica, but it bodes really well for the future. Yeah, he's a little baby. Shh. Oh, <laughs> let him sleep. But it, it does bode well for the lake. You know, you don't come to France to catch this size of fish. Um, there is a stock pond being built over there that I think Danny's going to put these fish in to grow them on in the future. But you're right, it, it basically means the fish are happy in here, they're spawning in here. Um, you know, and we're going to get a constant flow of fish coming through in the future. So, uh, yeah, and most importantly, more points on the board for Team England. Yeah, definitely. Well, England, well in the lead. Can anyone catch them? As Dan returned that small common back into Gigantica, we took the call from Team Ben Lux and word on the street is that Captain Iron has produced a monster and I know it's under there. And also Bart Voiton on the far bank has also had a result. So let's firstly look at what looks like a very large carp. Iron, how big is it? It's 41.2 English pounds. I caught it at one o'clock in the, in the night. I had a very slow take. I thought it was a bream to be honest. Very strong under the under the tip, but a nice fish. Yeah, beautiful leather. Well, let's have a look at this absolute beast. Oh, look at that! A, a quite stunning, stunning carp, and it's what what we come to Gigantica for. Have a look at that. Just give you a hand there, mate. Straighten the fish up for you. Ready? Well, Iron, you're no stranger to big fish, so this probably made you feel very, very happy. Yeah, of course. Always nice to catch big, big nice fish. Now, how do you think this affects the match? Do you, do you think this is going to um, get you back in the mix or do you think it's just a flash in the pan? Hopefully we get in. I think I will catch another fish in the night and hopefully Bart will stay on catching. He lost a fish as well in the evening already. And Mario, uh, hopefully he will catch a fish. Then we have a good chance to win. Well, it's one of the Gigantica monsters. It's what we all come to fish for. Hopefully, hopefully this is going to add a little bit of spice to the match. Well, told you in the first show that Mr. Danny Turley knows exactly where the fish are and exactly where to look at different times of the year. And he's just brought us to his aquarium. Danny boy, there are some fish in here, mate. Yeah. What, what have you seen so far? Because I'm, I'm, I'm bordering on wetting myself with excitement. <laughs> well, a big common that was out a couple of weeks ago at 50 pounds in here. Um, there's a nice uh, big scaly fish. It looks like it's just spawned out like a fully scales or pimply starburst scales. That's about 40 pounds. Oh, look at him, greedy boy. And then the greedy boy. <laughs> look at him, he's only about, what, probably 21, 22, and he? Yeah, he don't care, does he? No. Well, it's interesting because when I spoke to you in the first show, we spoke about the, the match situation and how, how you expected possibly a real big one to come out. Yeah. That's not materialised at the moment. No. But, but there seems to be a distinct reason for that. Yeah, well, prior to the match, they would have been spawning and, uh, in the whole area as general, fish are spawned due to the weather. And then after pre-spawning, they seem to have uh, come into the snags, calming down, feed on the natural food, rejuvenating their bodies, you know, it's been a stressful time for them. Well, there are some absolute whackers in here. Now, tell me a bit about some of the fish that are in here, some of the, you know, the, the, the A-team, if you like, of the stock. Well, we've got two large commons, obviously one that I said has been out at £50 recently. And he's floating around in here. He's floating around in here. Enjoying his boilies. Yeah. Then we've got the, uh, probably 10 or so £50 mirrors, um, six or seven known £60 mirrors, and then obviously the big fish, the 72. The giant. The giant. 
recently. Uh, Was that named after you? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> We've got uh, some amazing big fish, big fish coming through as well. You, um, you've actually been lucky enough to winkle one yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I had one a couple of weeks ago, 56. Nice fish, a fish called the twin. There, there seems to be quite a few of them that, that are like these high back, shoulder heavy carp that real bruisers. Yeah, yeah, there's about six or seven of the 50s, like upper 50s stroke 60s. They're almost identical yeah. you know, from the same brood stock, obviously. Really nice fish, big shoulders, big bellies, short, very lot of big weights on them. He's got big shoulders. Look at this one, yeah. a split dorsal. Two of them going at it, a linear oh, and a common. That's amazing stuff. Look at that. You just can't buy this type of this type of footage. Really, it is spellbinding, spellbinding. Feeding them by hand. Literally feeding them by hand. What now? One of these highbacks that sticks out for me was the first one I really saw from here was Tim Paisley's 57. Yeah. Now, I said to Dan the other day, I said, I wouldn't mind catching that because it don't look like it fights very hard, but I, I, I heard it was one of the greatest fights that Tim Paisley's ever had. Yeah, really give him the run around. Came, he was fishing further up from these snags and it worked its way down here. You know, really give him a good beasting. And uh, it was a nice fish, actually. Yeah, stunner. How, when they're doing this, how long do you think they hang around in the snags for before they start going out ravenous, ready to, to munch on anglers' baits again? On a, on a sunny day like this, they start coming in here between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. As the sun reaches its pinnacle, they start massing in here. Um, and once the, the daily temperature reaches its height between about 1 and 3 o'clock, there'll be a majority of the fish in here, not really feeding, to, just keeping out the sun. Chilling out. Yeah. <laughs> then as the water temperature slows, uh, drops gently, they start drifting out. There's very few fish in here at night. Right. Interesting stuff. Well, yeah. looking at the shadows that lie beneath, I can see exactly why this place is called Gigantica. I'm with my good mate Tom Dove and we're going to talk about a method that is relatively underused but ideal for deep water, especially in hot weather. So Dovester, yep. let's have a look at it. Right, this is the zig float. What you've got here is a lead that you put on first. Right, let's get out, that out of here. So now explain firstly why you'd use this instead of a standard zig rig that's tied to a standard lead setup. Simply when the water's too deep, because you, you can't cast an 18 foot zig rig out there, can you? And when, when you do, you don't know if it's tangled or, or anything like that. And, and it's a bugger to play fish on as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, because you can't, you can't reel your swivel back through your eyes and everything like that. So. Okay, so with this, Completely different, allows you to fish into that sort of depth of water. Yep. Right, explain to me how it works and how you tie it up. Right, okay, basically when you cast out, it works exactly like a marker float. You'd cast out, fill it down, or you don't fill it down, um, and then you'd, you'd, you'd put the line out so the float comes up and you've got your zig on the other end. But first of all, you put the lead on, All right. then a bead to, to butt up against the float. So we've got a little distance lead out. Is the weight of lead important? Um, I just changed the lead to the size of the float. So if I need to cast a really long way, I'll put a, a bigger lead on and a bigger float. Right. But if you're not casting out that far, then you can use a little lead and a little float. Okay. Yeah. So what's that, like two and a half or something? That's a two. That's All a, right. A two ounce lead and it's just a small little float. They're the smallest one they do. So four mil bead, small little uh, sub float. Yep. And then I take it, you've got another four mil bead and then what knot do you use to that swivel? Uh, a grinner. I'd still always use a grinner or a palomar. They're the best two knots you can use. Right, okay, I can see you've got a ring swivel on there. Is that, is that an important element to the rig? Yeah, it just stops tangles. Right. Um, you will get tangles with it. It is a bit of a nightmare rig for tangles, but um, it, the more you use it, the more you get used to how you've got to cast it out, how you've got to let it up, and then it, eventually you just sort of eradicate the tangles at all. All right, more on the casting later. Moving, moving down the rig now, so we've got the lead system, which is very, very simple, we have to add. Um, can't get simpler than that, mate. Well, no, seven pound mono, size 10 wide gape, and a little bit of foam on here. So a little bit of yellow foam, yeah. what's that, just knotless knot? Yeah, just knotless knot, exactly the same as your hair rig. Okay, you just touched there on um, the, the casting element, but, but before you do that, do you, do you normally use any foam? Yes, oh, every single time. I have a couple of bits of foam, if you put one that side, yep. lick the other one like that and stick them like that. Okay. I've used that or I put four or five bits of foam in a bag and clip the bag onto the hook and that, that eradicates tangles as well. Now. 
So, so that is completely as a, a tangle proof method, is yep, that right? It is, yeah. All right, now you, you touched on the casting. What is the method to do it? What's the correct way to cast? Right, it, it, like you would do your floater set up, cast out and just stop it before it's the surface so it doesn't all bomb in at once. Okay, so it springs the hook link away from uh, away from the float. Yeah, and then w when you generally would fill the lead down, like keep the line tight all the way down to the bottom, you wouldn't do it. So you stop it before it's the surface, then let it all go slack. So then the float can pull away from the lead um, and it'll be on the surface nearly. The lead will hit the bottom and then and then you're on the surface. So when, when you've got that, let me just untangle this. When, it, when it's out in the water, so what you're saying is you cast it out, that sinks. You'd have the lead up against there like that. Yep, so that, that plummets through into the depth. But, but where you let slack, when it sinks down, that'll pull up like that. Got you. Away got from you. the lead. So what you should end up with on the surface is that float there yep. and, the, and the hook bait on the surface. Yep. yep. And then and what do you do after that? One thing is, as long as you know how long your hook link is, yep. even if you're fishing too far out and you can't particularly see your hook bait, yep. you know that as soon as that bobs underneath the surface, you've then got, well I know that's three and a half foot, yep. you've then got three and a half foot to pull in until that is just bobbing underneath the surface. Okay, right, so you get those two things on the surface, yep. what do you do next? Put your rod on your rest, yep. tighten down to it until you just see the, the float bob. Okay. So, so then that... you know your line's tight all the way down to the lead, all the way up to the float, and then you've got your slack. Um, hook link on the surface. Yeah, got ya. And then I'll slowly pull a foot under, one, two, three and a half, and then I'll know that is tight to that underneath the surface. So on the surface, that should slide, shouldn't it? And yeah, then that'll it, be going under. It will do, and then you'll see that just bob underneath the surface. And then after that, I take it you, you, you take a, a, foot of, a foot at a time, is yeah, that right? a foot at a time, yeah. I'll always, if I think I'm, say I'm fishing in 23 foot of water, 24 foot of water, and I think the fish are at 17, then I'll pull it down eight or nine foot, so I know I'm not above them first. Yep. So then, then I'll let a foot off, let a foot off until I get a bite, hopefully. Okay. And then you know what depth they're at. And then you can just do the same every single time. So that's the beauty of it, because one thing people forget is that fish don't stay at the same depth all day or for a whole long session, no, do they? Not, no. So one day they might be, say, 12 foot in 20 foot of water, the next day they might be at 18 foot in 20 foot of exactly, water. Exactly, yeah. And the, the other good thing about it is, is that you don't have to keep recasting. You don't need to reel in, change your hook link, whack another one back out. It's all disturbance, isn't it? Where yeah. All you need to do is reel a foot down and you're, you're fishing a different rig. Well, that is excellent, excellent advice. An underused method, but a brilliant method. Ignore it at your peril. Well, a minor miscalculation on my behalf. England are now on the brink of 300 pound. Ting Tong, exactly how big is this one? This is 27.4. Was it? I think that's about right, mate. We'll settle on that. Now, you've uh, done a bit of jiggery pokery in the swim. I know you've been, you've got a productive rod, but you're not actually fishing there in the night. Is that right? Uh, it's a bit airy. It's all, there's a load of tree, tree stumps or tree branches. And by the time I get to the rod, bear in mind I'm only six foot away, it will, it will be in the snag. So I'm just pulling it away. I've still had a couple of bites by doing that, you know, but it's every time I put it in around the snags, I get a bite. But it's proper locked up, hairy, not really my sort of fishing, but it's producing bites and, the, and these fish are getting bigger, so I think there's a good chance of snaring, snaring a whacker out of there as well, you know? The, the average size is getting bigger and, and also you touched on it not being your type of fishing. Is that down to the fact that it takes you so long to get to a rod when you get a bite? <laughs> Again, it isn't very often I haven't got an answer, but this is one of those occasions. <laughs> You're too busy I'm cleaning too busy your cleaning. toes. Yeah, I've got a new technique for spoon cleaning in cups. We could perhaps do a bit on that later. <laughs> right, back onto a serious note. The boilies are really working for you. Yeah. Um, do you think if you'd applied particles or some smaller baits that your results would have been worse or better? I think they would have been worse. I personally think a lot of the small baits don't even get to the bottom in the depth. So 20 mil boilies, lots of them, get them rooting around, get them hunting for food, uh, and it's working. 10 bites like this now. Absolutely awesome. Well, I'm going to stop calling him Ting Tong. He is the magician. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. Well, it's very early on the final morning. A man that's been up all night is Bart Voiton of Benelux. Bart, what a beautiful, beautiful carp. How big is this one? This one's 28 pounds. Any more fish in the night? Yeah, I also caught a 20 pounder. Now, it seems to have developed for you in the last few days of the match. Why do you think that's happened? Yeah, the wind is changing. 
sun is go away, it's rainy day. So uh, I think the carp is moving into my swim. Well, it's a shame it didn't happen earlier, the, the wind. It might have given Ben Lux uh, a better chance. Um, I also believe there's been action further down the bank with Tom Dove, but for Ben Lux, it's a case of too little, too late. It's the final morning, and believe it or not, my old good mate Tom Dove has only gone and produced the goods. They say in sport, form's temporary, class is permanent, and with a change in wind direction, it's turned out exactly that way. How big is this one? 31.12, this one. Now, was this the only one you caught in the night? No, it wasn't actually. The wind swung sort of late last night um, and I caught a 25 straight away and, and this one rattled off this morning. Unbelievable, isn't it, mate? You can be in one area for a week, no fish, a small change in wind direction yeah. and out of nowhere, the cavalry arrive. That's all it needed was a change in wind direction. The weather's just much better now as well. You can see it's overcast and uh, it's much better for it now. I'm, I'm even confident of another bite, hopefully. Have you changed anything fishing-wise, any tactical change or you just kept what you're doing? No, I knew what, what I was doing would work, um, but the fish weren't here. So uh, I kept doing what I was doing, stayed confident, and uh, they turned up, and luckily I caught some. Lovely to save a blank in it. It was, yeah. It was a torture sitting in here for a week, but it's all changed around now, and it's much better with this one in my arms. Getting heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's fitting that the lion cub, who's been struggling, has got the nail and the hammer out and firmly smashed it in the coffin of Germany and Benelux. Well, it's no surprise that with this awesome carp fishing weather, it's gone ballistic this morning. And it's not like the captain, Danny Fairbrass, to miss out on the action. Just packing up. Look at the mayhem. He's got a lovely carp on the mat. Danny boy, how big's this one? Uh, scrape of 30, mate. My first one, £30 two. First one of the session. So, uh, well chuffed with this, mate. Well it's a real, in. real plump little one. It looks like it it's is. been fed by Danny Turtle. <laughs> Look at him there. What a stunner. Absolute yeah. beauty. What I've noticed, Dan, during this week here is that all the fish are distinctly different. Not, nothing's the same. They're not peas in a pod. No, not at all, mate. I mean, it's, it's one of the great things about the venue, you know, that you've got lovely scaly ones and then chunky French-looking things like this as well. He's going to be a big one, and you can tell. Look at the shoulders on him. Unbelievable. Wicked. Well, well the day, you know, in the trees yesterday, I saw some of them big, big monsters that haven't put in an appearance, but yep. God, there's some fish in here, mate. There, there is, mate. Yeah, I'll certainly be back later in the year to uh, have another go. Well, um, well, well, let's hope we come back with a thinking tackle team and uh, put some of them on the bank. Well, Danny boy doesn't miss out on the action. What a lovely, lovely 30 pounder. The final whistle has blown and now it's time for a little bit of chat with the captains and firstly, the crazy guy from Harland. Captain of Benelux, Iron. Iron, you caught a few fish, but you never caught England. No, you're right. After the first day, we lost them already out of sight. After that, we lost a couple of fish and it was over. Yeah, and they win. They deserve to win as well. Did you ever expect to catch them at any point? Yeah, in the beginning, we were quite on the fish. Only the uh, I had a couple of fish and after a couple of days, Bart had a couple of fish. If he had some fish earlier, we had a better chance to win, I think. Right, excellent. Dan, we're going to go to the winners before we uh, talk to the Germans. Now, how do you feel? Did you expect to win? Well, I'd just like to say uh, well done to the boys. The boys played a lovely game. Uh, in particular, the substitute, Tong, he's up there. He's a lovely boy. He fished well. He caught a load. And uh, Dove as well, at the end, uh, I have to say, true champion. A true champion. Caught a couple on last night. Put us right in the lead. Fabulous. Well, I never knew Terry Venables was inside you, but uh, he's in there somewhere, <laughs> isn't he? Hiding him. Now, Germany. What do we say about Germany? Firstly, do you think you can return to your country? Yeah, I hope we can return to our country. I hope, yeah. <laughs> now, do, do you think on the way back you'll be stopping off at a golf shop to maybe buy some clubs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think tonight we go fishing. What? What for? For fish, for carp, uh, for big carps. <laughs> are you going to rename it in your country, maybe from fishing to camping? <laughs> no, 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 Ellie. No, we uh, go further. For for us, um, yeah, it was a little bit a disaster. But it was a very good socializing with you guys here. <clears throat> we have uh, relaxed. We have enjoyed to be with you guys here on the bank. We have done our best. We have only <laughs> snacked up one. One in, lost in the snacks. Sorry, and, uh, I was falling asleep there. Um, <laughs> It, it's disaster with a capital D. Now, this is going to go on again and again. Do you think, as a team, you can come back and face these two giants again? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Next right. Year. Right, well, Germans, as always, are hungry. They want more of a beating. Now it's time for the presentation. And now the scores in third place. With a grand total of <coughs> zero pounds, 
Germany. And next, in second, a courageous performance with a grand total of 191 pounds and eight ounces with eight fish, Ben Lux. And in first place, with a grand total of 383 pounds and 12 ounces, 17 fish in total, and the winners of the first ever Gigantica European Cup, Team England! <laughs> Mr. Turtle, move in with the trophy. Time for some champagne. And the big story from Gigantica is that the three lions have torn Germany and Benelux to pieces. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. <laughs>